This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Wanlin versus Wanlin. You all are married. You've been together for four years. You have two children together. And allegations of cheating are wrecking your happy home. Ms. Wanlin, you've brought your husband to court today. Tell us why you're here. I'm here today, Your Honor, to find out if my husband's been cheating. He's disappeared. Money's gone missing out of our bank account. And it just it weighs heavy on my heart. When you say it weighs heavy on your heart, what do you mean? What does that feel like? I don't know. It's just hard not feeling like you can trust your partner fully with everything. You know, he doesn't have answers for anything. I just want the truth. Mr. Warmland. Yes, ma'am. How are you gonna leave your wife hanging out there like that? Well, I haven't left my wife hanging out there. I've, I've never cheated on her. Um, I mean, look at her. I mean, that's not a nickel and five pennies. It's not two nickels. That's a dime. You know, oh. I mean, all of it. Even though you think she's a dime, do you see the pain in her face? Do. do you hear the emotion in her voice? I absolutely do. That's why I'm glad to be here, to prove my innocence to my wife, so that we can go forward with a happy marriage and raise our two children the right way. Ms. Warlin, tell your husband why you opened this case today. Because I love you with everything in me. I love and I want you it too, to baby. be real. It is real, baby. You're gonna see. Now, when you talked about her, the way you looked at her and you said, that's not a nickel and five pennies, that's a dime. <laughs> I, I like didn't that, lie. Mr. Crowley. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a new one. That's a new one. Yeah. yeah. I noticed in the court papers you all met and married in 19 days? 19 days, Your Honor. Woo! That if was I could have done it quicker, I would have. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what was it about her that made you say, oh, she has got to be mine? Just two days before I met her, I got on my knees and I prayed to God. I said, God, please bring me somebody. So I was on red alert. I was looking, you know. Well, Your Honor, um, she was walking down the street, Bourbon Street, uh, swerving bourbon. Of course, I couldn't. She's statuesque, beautiful, voluptuous, curvy. I couldn't help but uh, notice that. And I was really, really happy to meet her. OK, Ms. Warland, he says he looked at you and was like, kapow. <laughs> what was it about him that caught your eye and said, let me give him the time of day? Everything. I love him. I think he's very handsome and he's oh. a blast to be with. Like, his personality just radiates off of him, his happiness and all that. And it was just fun and, I don't know, it was just instant. It was yeah. like... Really, 19 days, that's pretty instant. But he asked me to marry him, like, the first time he touched my hand. He was like, I'm marrying you. <laughs> oh, my <Yes>. goodness. <laughs> and you all have been together all this time. We have. Why are we here today? We had a restaurant together. OK. And I was um, leaving one day, and I went and put the baby in the car seat. And he was standing at the door, and a pretty young girl came walking around the corner and just walked up to him. I didn't think she was that pretty, him. Your Honor. Can I demonstrate with how close? Sure. So she comes walking. Come up to Ra. And she gets right here. I mean, their clothes Perjury. are touching. And she just stands there. This... So what did you think she was going to do, getting that close to your husband? I don't know. Uh, but you were uncomfortable with it. Very. Did you know this woman? No, I've never seen her. I All right, Mr. Warland. Oh, and and a lot comfort. of people come in and out of the restaurant, right. but this woman doing this caught your attention. Correct. And you think, okay, there's something going on right it looked there. It's like she was there to either say, look, either me or her, or, <laughs> well, um, you know, whatever. And, and then she said, well, I'm here. I want to talk to the owner. Well, we are the owners. So he goes, well, that's my wife. She's the owner. Like, oh. Right. So he right. pointed back well, to his wife, right? <laughs> well, Mr. Wallen, that's a good recovery, but why uh, is this but, woman? <laughs> Because, you know, uh, the girl that approached was wearing a white shirt and black pants, which in New Orleans means you're a server. And so when she came up, I correctly assumed, I said, are you looking for a job? And she's like, yeah. And then I, I looked over there and the hawk was watching me, sh like, late. To <laughs> and so I was like, I got nervous because, you know, I was like, oh, I hope this, she doesn't think anything. And of course she did think something. Because at that time, I mean, Everything in my life was scrutinized. She was going through my phone records. Here's the thing. I've applied for jobs, mm -hmm. and I've had people apply for jobs with me. Mm -hmm. The interaction and the interview process typically doesn't go like this. It hey, didn't go like you. that. How you doing? It did. It, you know. No, it didn't. Yeah. Did she actually come to work at the restaurant? She didn't. No, she did not. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Well, that was a good she choice. Didn't. There wasn't right. even an application left. So supposedly when oh. I left, she went and filled out an application and this and that. That was one of the jobs you were supposed to do, make sure there was applications on mm. file, but you were too busy. It, the application me. vanished. Ms. Wallen ain't no dummy. 
No. She's like, okay. So uh, it was another I, time. Her application went in file 13. That's where her application oh, yeah. went. Oh, yeah. It was, okay. But well, what other evidence what, do you have to so think he's cheating? the next time we share a car, so I was picking him up from work, like we do every night. It was 10 o'clock. I was going to get him. And I said, I'm turning on the street. I'm about to pull in the parking lot. Can you see my car? He was like, yeah, yeah, I see you. Come on. I pull up. He's gone. So I call him on the phone. He didn't answer and call and call and finally answers. And he's like, I got to ride home. I was like, what do you mean you got to ride home? I told you I was pulling in the parking lot and you said, okay, I'm standing outside. Oh, this girl's friend was going to give me a ride home. She lives right by us. So, I, you know, sometimes it takes you a long time with the babies. So I just got to ride. So I said, no, you, wherever you're at, I'm going to come get you. Just stop right there. I'm coming. So our house is to the right. To get him, I had to take a left and go the complete opposite this direction. This is not of our what house. happened at all. He's hold on, hold on the side of the road. And I'm like, wait, where's your friend who's bringing you home? Oh, me and you were fussing. She didn't want drama, so she put me out and told me, you know, no. whatever. Nothing about it made sense at all. Okay, uh, well, all right, Mr. Wyland. No. Well, if, if Cheryl tells you she'll be there at 11, she'll be there at 1. So at the end of a tired day, when I found out one of my toothless, this woman was toothless. I mean, if you're going to peg me as a cheater, put me with somebody that's got a grill. Mr. Wallen. So, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Wallen. You know, toothless women need love, too. She ain't going to get it from me. So I, she, she called, and I told her that um, I had a ride, and she flipped out. She was like, well, get out of the car now. And I was like, what, uh, where? She goes, uh... I told her where I was, and she told me what corner to get out of, and I did. I, I obeyed orders. I got out of the car where I was, and she came and picked me up. And, I mean, you, you see how frivolous these things are? Where's the so, text messages from a girl? All right, did you tell him to get out of the car with whoever he was with? I just said, stay where you're at. I want to see who you're with. I'm coming. Okay, where how do I stay at? where I'm at if I don't get out of the car? You think he was with some other woman? Yep. And the reason he got out the car and told her to, to go ahead, he didn't want you to see it. Yep. Because so, she might have had a whole grill of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> She might have been a dime piece, too. Yeah. Well, Ms. Wallen, so far we've had two instances of you catching him actually with women. What other evidence do you have that he might be cheating? So, I was going in our office to pay bills, and money was missing, like 200 here, 300 there. Right, and the reason for that... Hold on, Mr. Wallen, hold, hold on. on. Months, hold on. 200 here, 300 here, every week or every other week is gone. There's no explanation for this money. So what do you think he was doing with the money? I don't know. I guess he was... I don't know if he was paying for somebody's apartment. I don't know if he was buying her jewelry. I don't know what he yeah. was doing. But you think it was being used for another woman, for sure? Yes. I mean, Mr. Waller, was money missing? Absolutely. No, money was not missing. It's a credit card world now. So I, we're... I, nobody pays with cash. So anything that I need cash for, I got to pay a server's tips at the end of the night. I got to pay them in cash. I got to pay the people at the hotels that, that refer business to me. They, they get a commission. You have to pay the hotels a commission. What, what is that? Front of the house uh, employees at the hotel, like a concierge, a front desk agent, a bartender, a bellman, I teach them how to eloquate my menu, how to teach my menu, uh, how to uh, sell it to, the, to, to their guests. And for each person they would bring, I would give them $2 ahead at lunch and $4 for dinner guests. And that's where you're it's saying this money that she claims is missing with Part of it, yeah, that's part of where it's going. That's correct, yes. Well, the interesting thing is the court did some investigation and we wanted to find out if accepting these cash incentives as you have described them is a common practice. A member of our staff contacted 10 hotels within a one-mile radius of your restaurant. And zero of them said that they accept cash in exchange for restaurant promotions. Right. Well, they're not supposed to. It's against their policy. It is. All we have is your word that guess... this is where the money went. Yes. Because your wife thinks it went for other women. Correct. Right. Then there was times I'd wake up, you know, and... He loves to say, I've been at home every single night sleeping next to you. It'd be when I wake up in the morning, it was daytime stuff he was missing. You know, it wasn't a night, it was morning. So hey, I'd wake up Don't you work gone. during the day? I, am I supposed to be missing? No. Oh. So you're saying when you wake up in the morning, a few he's times. not there? Yeah. On Mondays, because business was so bad at the restaurant that I'd have to go get the money early Monday morning out of our account when the credit card batch would send the weekend batch. I'd have to go take that money out so I could make payroll on Monday. That's how bad business was. And when you ask him about it, where does he tell you he's gone to? Oh, I wasn't gone that long. I just ran to the store. I just ran to the store. He never told you long. about going to the bank, though? Mm-mm. No. I didn't? Mm-mm. Perjury. 
Well, Miss Cutler and I work together. <laughs> I but we don't together. run a restaurant together. And that, don't, the don't way you me. all have made it sound, that's a unique situation it to be married and running a restaurant together. So to get some perspective on that, the court would like to call a restaurant tour, New York Times best-selling author and star of shows on the CW and Food Networks, Mr. Pat Neely. Ron, please escort Mr. Neely into the court. Yes, Mr. Neely, how are you? Hi, how are you? It's good to see you today. Mr. Neely, do you believe that the start of a restaurant can be the end of a marriage? I don't believe so. Okay. I believe that if your marriage has a solid foundation to start with, a business can't ruin it. And you have to have a huge level of communication. Now, you've been in the restaurant business a long time. Yes. Mr. Wanlin mentioned that he makes it a practice to go around to local hotels and maybe give them a little bit of cash incentives to steer people to his restaurant. Is that something that's common in the restaurant business? Never heard of it. You've never I've heard never of heard it? I've never heard of it. I personally would take front desk people samples of my food. Their credibility mm -hmm. is not relying on me giving them a few bucks, but their credibility is relying on I know it's going to be good because I've tasted. You need to go try that macaroni and cheese because I had some yesterday. That has always been our practice, not only in my business, but the associates that I have come to know over some 30 years in the restaurant business. From your decades of being in the restaurant business, have you observed situations where staff has hooked up with each other after work? I never allowed it. I never tolerated it because it's a recipe for disaster. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Neely. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Cutler, I think that we have enough evidence to move this ball forward. First of all, you believe that he is cheating because he disappears for hours at a time. Then you said and provided evidence of the woman he just came up, that came up on him this close. You also have him being picked up by another oh. woman when she was supposed to pick him up, and then he's like, oh, I got to ride with somebody else. Don't worry about it. And then you have the and money. You're not only struggling with your business, you're struggling with your heart. Mm -hmm. And I see you kind of holding yourself together, trying not to, to give in to it. But what, what I see is a woman that is being destroyed. A woman who is being devastated in this relationship. Am I right? <laughs> we have two little boys. Two babies. Yep. And so you are not only trying to keep your life together, you're trying to keep your family together. Mm -hmm. Everything is riding on what we find out today. Mm -hmm. All right. This court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court will call licensed polygraph examiner Kendall Scholl to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Ron, please escort Mr. Scholl into the courtroom. Good day, Mr. Scholl. Good day, Your Honor. You conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Wadlin. Is that correct? I did, Your Honor. So you asked Mr. Wanlin, did you remove money from your joint bank account for sexual encounters with other women? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? Your Honor, the lie detector determined he was being truthful. First hint of a smile. <laughs> All right. You've got like, to feel I... me. <laughs> All right, he's feeling good. <laughs> but we do have another question. Of course we do. You asked Mr. Wanlin, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your wife, Cheryl, in the four years you have been married? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? Your Honor, the lie detector determined that he was being Truthful. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, I, I, I know I, how Mr. Wall is feeling. I want to know how oh, Mr. Wall is feeling. Is. And there it is. 
I told you. Miss Wineland. With all that, who will I go anywhere else? <laughs> well, she still got what it takes. That's a, that's does. clearly. She's still a dime. She yeah, still she might dime. be 15 cents at this uh, point. Yeah, Miss right, right, Wineland. Right. Yeah. I am so happy. Me too. That we got the results we got. And Mr. Wineland, I'm so grateful and happy that you were telling the truth. Yes, ma'am. Because she clearly loves you. Yes. And you clearly love her. I clearly do. Oh, that, that, you're, you're a character, but you love her. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I love my wife. And you know, you're gonna have to work through some things to stop being so suspicious and give him the benefit of the doubt. He wouldn't jeopardize this. He ain't gonna throw away a dime. <laughs> so, you know, that's what you all need to do to move forward. Mr. Neely, Thank you so much for your insightfulness. Those were great uh, tips and information for us to help them through this process. And as we say in this courtroom, do not cheat yourself out of an opportunity to have a happy, healthy, successful relationship. Court is adjourned.